Hey everybody, this is Johnny Eisen from the Peterson Museum. Today we'll be walking through our Porsche 75th anniversary exhibit, We Are Porsche. Here we have a 1964 Porsche 901. This is one of the very first Porsche 911s. The 911 was first called the 901, which was the designation that Porsche gave it. But Peugeot had been naming their cars with three digit numbers with a zero in the middle. So they objected and Porsche changed the name from 901 to 911. This is a 1955 Porsche Continental. This is a, uh, an early 356 imported to America. Uh, when Porsche first started uh, importing cars to America, uh, they all were called 356. But the uh, first importer, Max Hoffman of New York City, told Porsche that Americans don't like cars with numbers as names, they like real names. So Porsche tried renaming this car the Continental. Uh, they built about 1,000 with that name before they went back to 356. This is a replica of the very first Porsche, the 1948 356-1. Uh, this car was uh, painstakingly built in 2018 for Porsche's 70th anniversary, and it's an exact replica of the very first car that Ferry Porsche uh, designed and had built in Gmund, Austria. You notice this car is a little bit different than the Porsches that followed. It's mid-engined. It's a two-seater. Uh, it also had an aluminum body like the uh, cars, production cars that followed it. Uh, but after producing this car, Porsche decided that they wanted something a little bit more practical, something with a little bit of luggage space and uh, two extra seats. Uh, so they moved the engine to behind the rear axle, giving a little bit more cockpit room and uh, making a car that was a lot easier to drive. Here we have a 1949 Porsche 356, also known as a Gmun Coupe. Uh, for the first two years of Porsche's existence, they had a small factory and a sawmill in Gmund, Austria. And there they built the first 52 Porsches, of which this is one. These are called the Gmun Coupes. They have a 40 horsepower flat four engine uh, derived from the Volkswagen Beetle motor. And they're all hand built with an aluminum body shaped by hand on uh, wooden forms. Uh, next to the Gamun Coupe, we see a replica of the wooden buck. Uh, the wooden buck was in the first Porsche factory. And since the bodies were all hand uh, formed, uh, after they would form a body part, they would place it on this wooden structure to make sure that the shape was right and that the different body panels would fit, fit together correctly. Uh, here we have a 1958 Porsche 356 Carrera GT Speedster. The Speedster was the brainchild of Max Hoffman, who was the very first importer of Porsches into the United States. After selling cars for a couple of years, he thought that uh, what the American market needed was a very stripped down car that he could sell for under $3,000. And that idea became the Speedster, a sportier 356 with uh, no extra accoutrements. It was a lightweight car. It was good for racing as well as for uh, driving to work during the week. This particular model is the uh, Carrera GT, which had the four cam racing Carrera engine. Uh, these cars were uh, set up for competition, and this particular car is the most successful GT Carrera Speedster uh, of all time. This is a 1952 356 America Roadster. Before the Speedster, uh, Porsche produced this car also specifically for the American market, a uh, lighter, uh, sportier Roadster. It had a hand-built aluminum body with uh, a different shape than the normal 356. These cars are very expensive to produce, 
and uh, did not uh, perform quite as well as Porsche was expecting. So production stopped after only 17 cars. And this is the very last America Roadster built. It was built specifically for the West Coast uh, Porsche dealer, John von Neumann, who requested one that he could take to the track with absolutely no frills. It originally had no bumpers, uh, no extra uh, trim, and uh, was uh, the only one that was a successful race car. Here is a 1968 911S. The 911S was uh, another car produced for uh, competition. It had a uh, sport package and rally package. This car was uh, owned and raced by Vasek Polak. Vasek Polak had the first standalone Porsche dealership in the United States here in Southern California. He was a European immigrant who became an expert at uh, tuning and working on Porsche engines and uh, moved to California where there were more Porsches than anywhere else in the world to uh, work on race cars. In the mid-1950s, Porsche came out with the 550 Spider, their first car built exclusively for racing. It had a lightweight aluminum body and a mid-engine layout, and it became a ubiquitous presence on racetracks all around the world. But it was notoriously difficult to drive, with the cars uh, being very inconsistent. Some of them would understeer, some of them would oversteer. And so in the late 50s, Porsche came out with a much improved replacement, this car, the 718 RSK. It had an improved suspension, a new space frame, and a more aerodynamic body. Uh, this car became extremely successful in the uh, small displacement classes. This particular one was owned by a privateer named Roy Schechter, who was an Air Force World War II veteran who uh, owned his own Porsche dealership and started buying and racing cars. Here we have the 1956 Pooper. This is a car with a uh, Porsche engine and a Cooper body and chassis. It was built by driver Ken Miles, who was driving for the John von Neumann racing team. Uh, when von Neumann couldn't get an improved uh, 550A Spider, Ken Miles suggested that they take a light and nimble British Cooper race car and put a Porsche engine in it. The result was this car, which was a car that was practically unbeatable in its class at the time, winning seven of nine races. When Porsche learned that uh, von Neumann was running this car, they immediately sent him a 550A Spider and told him to stop running this because it was beating their cars so thoroughly. Here we have a 1970 914 6. The 914 was Porsche's uh, attempt at making a lower priced car. Uh, it's a mid engine, two seat car. Uh, after uh, the car debuted with a four-cylinder engine, Porsche made a run of them with their six-cylinder motor, uh, which put it at a price that was equal to the 911, and most people wanted the 911 over a 914, which was considered the lesser Porsche. Uh, so these didn't sell very well, but they're a very unique, very sporty, and a great handling car, and at the time, a terrific bargain, because on the used market, you could get one for about the price of a Beetle. All right, here we have a, a 1973 911 2.8 RSR. This car was uh, raced by the Brumos team out of Jacksonville, Florida, one of the most legendary racing teams in American history. Uh, Peter Gregg and Hurley Haywood drove this car to uh, IMSA and Trans Am victories, championships in 1973. The RSR was the 911 built purely for competition and was the lightest, fastest Porsche built up to this point. Here we have the 1973 Porsche 91730. This is one of the most powerful race cars ever built. It has a turbocharged flat 12 engine. In 1973, driver Mark Donahue drove this car to the Can-Am Championship, winning six of eight races that year. This car earned the nickname Can-Am Killer because two years later, the Can-Am series uh, went under and uh, mostly due to the fact that the competition was so poor with this car dominating the series uh, so thoroughly. Here we have a 2005 911 GT3 RSR. This car was part of the Peterson White Lightning uh, racing team. Uh, in 2005, this car ran in the American Le Mans series. This was actually the last uh, 996 generation uh, GT3 RSR built. Uh, it was driven by Patrick Long, 
who is a uh, one of the only American uh, Porsche factory works drivers uh, and um, a Porsche aficionado and fan and founder of Lufkakult. This is the 2018 Porsche 911 GT3 Cup PCA edition. The PCA is the Porsche Club of America. And this car was produced in uh, very small numbers exclusively for Porsche Club of America members. Uh, it's a GT3 Cup, which is a uh, racing prepared 911. Uh, this particular one has some uh, unique features like a double bubble roof and the uh, wing in the back. Uh, it has a 485 horsepower engine. Uh, and is a beast on the track. This is a 1976 911 Turbo Carrera, once owned by Steve McQueen. Uh, the main focus of our We Are Porsche exhibit are the people here in America who helped build the Porsche brand and establish a Porsche culture. Uh, nobody exemplifies that like Steve McQueen, who was a car lover, a race car driver, filmmaker, actor, and especially lover of Porsches. This is the last new car he ever bought. Uh, it was a uh, custom order from Bob Smith Porsche here in Hollywood, California. It features this unique flat black, uh, flat gray paint job. Uh, and uh, McQueen owned this car until his death. This is a 2014 911 GT America. Uh, this was a race car produced exclusively for endurance racing here in North America. This example was driven by actor Patrick Dempsey, who uh, famously went on to be a race car driver uh, while still being uh, Dr. McDreamy on Grey's Anatomy. Uh, he uh, ran this car for one season. Uh, Patrick uh, was well known for driving Porsches. Uh, he drove them several times at uh, Le Mans and uh, is probably one of the most successful uh, actor race car drivers uh, of the uh, past 50 years. All right, this is the 1976 Porsche 935. The 935 was a uh, race car, as you can see. It has a lightweight fiberglass body and a 650 horsepower Porsche engine in it. This particular car was owned and driven by Otis Chandler, who was the publisher of the LA Times in the late 70s and early 80s. He was a uh, car enthusiast, especially a Porsche enthusiast. And uh, he had a number of Porsches and a number of race cars that he drove himself. This is the 2017 911 Turbo S. This particular car was uh, owned by Slash, a renowned guitarist for the band Guns N' Roses. Uh, this car was a custom order, so it's pretty much a one-of-a-kind car. It's painted this beautiful forest green. Slash is a, a big fan of reptiles and dinosaurs, which is why he picked the color green for this car. Uh, it was also nicknamed Turbosaurus Rex. Uh, Slash uh, had previously owned several Aston Martins as a tribute to his British heritage, but when he uh, first drove a Porsche, he uh, sold his Astons and bought this car. This is a 1973 911S. Uh, this car was featured in the film Top Gun Maverick. It was uh, one of two uh, 911Ss, uh, nearly identical to each other, uh, that were used as Jennifer Connelly's character's car in the movie. And here we have the 356 Emery Special. This is a custom 356 built by Rod Emery, the 356 Outlaw. Uh, Rod is famous for his uh, custom 356s. He likes to imagine what would have happened had Porsche kept developing their first model, the 356. Uh, he uses uh, parts from later Porsches uh, to uh, enhance the performance of the cars, uh, customizing the suspension as well as the engine. And uh, the bodies all have uh, this unique uh, custom shape that is uh, his version of what would have happened had the car kept evolving. Here we have a 1956 356A. Uh, this car has been set up to drive on a uh, Antarctic glacier. Uh, this car is owned by Rene Brinkerhoff. Uh, Rene has a charity called Valkyrie Gives, uh, which is to uh, raise awareness for uh, women at risk and child trafficking. Uh, she raced this car on every continent 
uh, in rallies in North America, South America, Asia, and Europe. And her final rally was uh, in Antarctica. It took about a year to prepare this car to uh, run in Antarctica, to run in the very cold weather, as well as on the snow. As you can see, it features tracks in the back and these skis in the front wheels. This is a crevasse bar to uh, help prevent it from uh, falling into uh, large cracks in the uh, ice and snow. Uh, and it's a pretty much one of a kind uh, Porsche 356. This is the 1964 Porsche 904 Carrera GTS, uh, one of the most successful race cars Porsche ever produced and the first fiberglass bodied Porsche. I like to say it's the first Porsche that didn't look like a Porsche. Uh, one of the most successful cars of its era and uh, was uh, pretty ubiquitous on racetracks uh, in the mid 1960s. Thanks everybody, that's a uh, selection of some of the Porsches we have here at We Are Porsche, our 75th anniversary Porsche exhibit here at the Peterson Automotive Museum. There's more to see, so uh, come on down to the museum and uh, enjoy.